Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net, and follow us on Twitter at uh, Radio Detectives. Well, this is the start of our listener support campaign. And over the years, I'm thankful to everyone who has really supported the show uh, because they've made it possible for us to continue to uh, do this. When the, we first started, expenses were a lot lower in some ways, but over the years, some of these have uh, increased. One thing, of course, is hosting. With the sheer number of episodes that we host, I actually had to start uh, renting a server. And to protect us from... Um, malware uh, infection that could put the show's uh, integrity and risk. We have a virus uh, scanning service, and there have been a, a few little pieces of hardware we've purchased over the past uh, year or so. And so listener uh, contributions help to defer these expenses, as well as just the uh, amount of time spent producing, recording, listening, researching, and so many things which we do here in pursuit of this passion for the great detectives of old time radio and it really builds towards that goal of being able to focus on those things that i'm most passionate about so thank you so much uh, for your support very briefly uh, during the listener support campaign uh, in appreciation of our listeners uh, throughout the year any donations of seven dollars or more will send access to the premium site and that still goes but for a donation of twenty dollars or more we'll send your choice of one of my superhero comedies novels slime incorporated all i needed to know i learned from colombo or what made the golden age shine and in addition to that we'll send you an additional thank you gift among the options we have at the twenty dollar level are the Colonial Radio Theater Father Brown uh, sets. They're reproducing uh, them, and they've released the uh, adaptations of all the stories in the innocence of Father Brown in three volumes, so we'll send your choice of volume one, volume two, or volume three for a donation of $20 or more. At the $100 level, if you're in the U.S., We'll gladly send you the George Sanders Saint movie collection with all five of George Sanders' 1940s uh, performances as the Saint, very iconic and s considered by many to still be the definitive performance of the Saint. And that's with a donation of $100 or more. And we have a full list of items, ebooks, digital audiobooks, paperbacks, and uh, comics support at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also mail in a donation to P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. Please make a check payable to Adam Graham. All right. Well, uh, I apologize for the long intro. We'll try and shorten them up the uh, rest of the listener support campaign. But here now is today's episode of The Saint from September the 24th of 1950, Dossier on a Doggone Dog. Vincent Price, who is usually heard at this time as the saint, has been delayed in Paris. Tonight, by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, you will hear Barry Sullivan in the role. Mr. Sullivan can currently be seen with Lana Turner and Ray Milland in A Life of Her Own. Adventures of the Saint, starring Barry Sullivan. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Barry Sullivan as The Saint. That's what I call service, parked right in front of my apartment. Waiting for you, Mr. Templer. I was hoping you would be desirous of a hack. That I am, Louis. Well, where to, Mr. Templer? Well, I'm not quite sure. You see, I have a problem up in my apartment. What's your name? Well, I call her Minerva. Another dish and a jam? She won't tell me. 
By the way she cries, I have an idea something's wrong. How long has she been at your place? Oh, a couple of hours. Are you still crying? Oh, Mr. Temple, you're losing your charm. I think she wants to go home. You're definitely losing your charm. I'd like to take her home. Well, she lost her charm, too. Only huh? I don't know where her home is. But now that you're here, I'll untie her, and maybe she can find her own way. You'll untie Mr. Temple. Louis. Louis, she's a dog. Oh, well, why didn't you say? I found her this morning. I've never seen her around here before. So I didn't want to turn her loose, because if she can't find her way home, there's no telling what will happen to her. So what are you going to do? Turn her loose. But you just said that you... That's don't... where you come in. We'll follow her in your hack. See where she goes so we can keep her out of trouble. Oh, that I should live to see the day when the Robin Hood of modern crime is nursemaid to a poop. Remember the saying, Louie, do unto other dumb animals what you would have others do unto you. Besides, she's cute. Yeah, huh? What kind is she? Pekingese. I thought you said it was a dog. Louie, that's unkind. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Stay put, Louie. I'll get Minerva and let's see where she takes us. Hey, Minerva has fancy taste. This is a real expensive neighborhood. And this is a real expensive trip. We've been following her for over an hour. You know any better way to spend your money, Mr. Temple, than giving it to me? Oh, Van, I can think of a couple. Say, Minerva's turning in at that gate. Yeah. Cute little shack she picked. I'll bet it doesn't have over 40 rooms. You think she really lives there, or is she only dreaming? I'll yeah, soon find out. Louie, turn into the driveway and park. I'll take her up to the house. If she does belong here, there will no doubtless be a reward. And if there is no doubtless Stop a reward... Stop drooling, Louie. Your cut is already on the meter, so either way, you can't lose. I'm not making out so awful good on it, Mr. Templer. Only one fare, only one tip, and more than an hour. Where's the profit? Now? Why, Louie, the conversation, of oh. course. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? You want down? Well, you're out of luck. Or maybe you're in luck. Because when I pick up a young lady, I usually show her a good time. So if it turns out you don't live here, what? Yes, sir. Uh, hello. My name's Simon Templer. Oh, yes. I'm sure Madam will be delighted you've come. You're sure? Of course. Right this way, sir. Uh, why should Madam be delighted I've come? You surprise me, sir. I never heard that modesty was one of your outstanding characteristics. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about me. Doesn't everybody, if you pardon the levity? I'll pardon the levity, but not the evasion. Evasion? I asked you why Madam should be delighted I've come. Is it because of Minerva? Minerva, sir? This. <laughs> oh, you mean Ming Toy? Do I? I guess I do. I should have known Ming Toy. Naturally, Madam will be delighted about the dog. But what I was particularly referring to were the jewels. Have you brought them also? Jewels? Apparently you haven't. I hope you'll pardon these questions, sir. The kitchen help expects it of me. And I like to have something to report. Now, I'll issue communiques from the front. Which reminds me, where is the front? Around this next bend, sir. In the east wing. Ah. If I'd known the hall was this long, I'd have asked Louis to bring in his cab. My feet hurt. It's not much further. Well, let's be thankful for small favors. What was that? Does anyone in this house take singing lessons? No, sir. Then that was a scream, and it came from in there. Oh, Did you scream? Who are you? I'm... Uh... Oh, 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 mean toy, darling. Come to Mama. Give it to me, young man. Here. Oh. Oh, Mama's little baby begins. Is him all right? Well, she's all right, but something else isn't. Somebody screamed. I know, I did. There was someone peering through that window. Was it you? Yeah, hardly. I was in the house. Well, you have no business barging in here unannounced. And it seems, lady, that I run faster than your butler. I thought you were in trouble. Well, I was startled. Now, somebody better go investigate. Oh, Minnie, Angel, you didn't mention what wrong. What is it, madam? Is something wrong? Well, there's a prowler outside the window. Go see who it is, please. Yes, madam. Now you, young man. Do you have my jewels? I was wondering when we'd get around to that. I'm also wondering... Mother? Mother, are you all right? I heard you scream. Yes, sir, Miss... Uh, Who's he? Me? Yes. What are you doing here? I just came to return your door. Return? Yes, here she is. Mama's oh. precious. Say, her car's off. That's right. How did you know she's our dog? Oh. I didn't. Well, then what? Hey, wait a minute. I'm waiting. Put up your hands. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry, I waited. Oh, I didn't know you owned a revolver. Lucky I do. Mother, call the police. Tell them we've got the thief. Oh, great. Somebody screamed. Was it you? Was it Yes, dear, but it's all right. I saw somebody at the window. Fitch is looking into it. Ernest, what the devil are you doing? 
Haven't I told you not to play with guns? I'm not playing, Father. This is the thief. Sure. Does he have the jewels? I haven't searched him. Then how do you know? He brought that Ming Toy. Huh? Oh, yes. Morning, Ming Toy. <laughs> Don't bite me, you little monster. Just a minute, Father. She doesn't have her color, so how could he know she was our dog? She told me. Oh, we're just wasting time. Mother, will you please pick up that phone and call the police? It won't do any good. The line's been cut. See? What? Thanks for looking down. Hey! Oh, what are you doing? Oh, Stop immediately. I'll take the gun. Here, let me have it. That's better. Such violence. Yeah. It's very good exercise. I wish you gave the young man the gun. Why? I asked him so nicely. Now, will somebody please tell me what's going on around here? As if you don't As know. if I don't. Just who are you anyway, young fella? Simon Templer. And you? You don't know who I am? Should I? I, sir, am C.J. Allardyce. Fancy that. Nuts. I beg your pardon? I said nuts. So you did. As in bolts. Nuts and bolts. We manufacture them. You heard of Allardyce nuts? Yes, aren't they? Uh, what's that? The whole family. Beg pardon? Skip it. Our slogan. If it's Allardyce, it's nuts. That's what I said. There's no nut like an Allardyce. Well, this could go on all day. Father, I'm sure Mr. Templer didn't come here to talk business. Eh? Huh? Why did he come? To return Ming Tsui. And now that I've been so warmly thanked, I'll just run along. I hope you won't mind my taking your revolver with me, Ernest, as a souvenir. When I'm safely out of reach in northern Tibet, say, I'll send it back. Well, Joe. Oh, All right, Louie, let's get out of here. What took you so long? Lou, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, try me. No, it's no use. I don't believe it myself. Did you get a reward? Reward? <laughs> Louie, I'm out of there. Who could ask for anything more? Now, let's go. Hey, just a minute, Mr. Tepper. Now what? Somebody is hiding in them bushes and watching us, you see? Oh, yeah. Now, uh, that's probably who Mrs. Allardyce saw at the window. Well, get started, Louie. They ain't going to investigate? It's probably only a man eating a gorilla. None of our business. This is not like you, Mr. Temple. It's not like you at all. As a matter of fact, I'm not exactly feeling myself at the moment, so don't be too surprised. But where is your spirit of adventure? Huh? What may lurk in them bushes? Excitement, thrills, who knows? I know. You do? Yeah. I can see him in your rearview mirror. It's a kid. A kid about ten years old. A kid? Let's get out of here. <laughs> Excitement I could stand. <laughs> Mystery I could stand. Adventure. But kids, I got a nephew. What's wrong with this thing? Hi. Hello, kid. Hey, what's the matter, mister? Won't you start? Oh, sure, sure, she'll start. I'm just trying to run down the battery so the lights won't work and I kind of I don't like night driving. Wise guy. Uh, what's your name, Sonny? It ain't Sonny. Well, what is it? What's it to you? See what I mean, Mr. Uh, yeah. Look, fella, if you don't tell me your name, I'm going to have to call you my little man. How would you like that? You win. It's Stevie. What's yours? Simon. Simon which? Simon Templer. A saint? Yeah, Stevie. Hey, wait a minute. You may not be him at all. How oh, I know this ain't a bluff. You don't. Well, it's worth a chance. Because if you're the real saint, you will meet them do business. What sort of business, Stevie? Well, I read a lot of books about detectives. Yes, yeah, I gather. Well, we ought to make a good partnership, you and me. You help me latch onto the ice, and we'll split the reward. The ice? Fifty grand worth. And that ain't peanuts. Stevie, suppose you tell me about this jewelry. Just when was it taken? You don't know? No. You're not the saint. Oh, believe me, Stevie, the saint doesn't know everything. Why don't you come here? To return Ming Toy? You know what you trying to kill? No, it's on the level. Look, mister, I happen to know you couldn't return Ming Toy, see? What do you mean I couldn't? Never mind, but I know. If you don't believe me, ask Louie here. I thought her name was Minerva. Oh, you're always such a help. Stevie, why do you say I couldn't return Ming Toy? I'm not talking. I don't get it. Ah, I see a look in your eye, Mr. Temple. The mystery's beginning to needle you. Stevie... Stevie, if I prove I brought back Ming Toy, will you tell me why you said I couldn't? Sure. And you won't prove it. Wait here, Louie. I'll probably hate myself in the morning, but I'm going back to the Allardyces. Come on, Stevie. Come in. Excuse me, madam. Mr. Templer is here again with the gardener's boy. 
the gardener's boy? Yes, madam. But well, he can't bring that urchin to the house. I'm very sorry, madam, but he has. Shall I show them out? No, show them in. I'll tell him myself. Very good, madam. You may come in, Mr. Templer. Thank you, Jeeves. Fitch, sir. I stand corrected. <laughs> Well, hello again, Mrs. Allardyce. Oh, really, Mr. Temple, this is impossible. Bringing in that... that... Good heavens! He's the face at the window. I was just a check. Oh, I should have recognized him at the time. Oh, Mr. Temple, you're wonderful. Positively wonderful. <laughs> First Ming Toy, now the prowler. Fitch had no luck whatsoever. Simply none. You're an amazing man. Sit down. Have a chocolate. No, thanks. Yeah, thanks. If you don't mind, we'd like to see Ming Toy. Why? Uh... I forgot to say goodbye to her. Oh, oh very well. Minnie, come to Mother. Minnie. Now, where is that animal? She was here right just a moment ago. Minnie. Minnie. Did you call Mother? Oh, Ernie, have you seen Minnie Toy? No. I thought she was in here. Well, she's not. Don't tell me she's disappeared again. Oh, so it would seem. Vanished into a thin air. My poor, it's a baby. Gone. Hello, mister. Now what have you got to say? Say? Stevie, I'm speechless. <laughs> Oh, hello, Louis. Mr. Templer, how come you're answering the door? They don't have no butler? He's not around. Oh. Strange. No dog, no butler. Well, what do you want, Louis? I just come to see what's keeping you this time. My media's getting dizzy going round and round. Uh, Ming Toy's missing again. We're looking for her. It's a big house. She's a little dog. Why don't you just forget the whole thing? Because, Louis, it doesn't make sense. She ought to come when we call, or at least bark. Well, what do I do? Go take another nap? I don't know. Maybe Louis... Hey, mister! What is it, Phoebe? You are the same. Oh, well, what brings all this on? I found Ming Toy. You did? Yeah. Ben down slight and whisper. Huh? This is top secret. Yeah, done, Ben. Pitch has her in the garage. Well, what's he doing? Giving her a shampoo? No. He's shaving her. Shaving her? With an electric razor. Well, let's go get her. Come on, Louie. Oh, no thanks, Mr. Templer. You and the kid go. Me, I'm going back to the hat for another nap. I can dream nightmares that make better sense than this. So long. Stevie, when we get near the garage, let's be quiet. We don't want Fitz to hear us. Okay. Hello there. Oh, oh it's Ernest. I've looked all over the grounds. Can't find it. Yeah, it's all right. Stevie's found her. Your butler has her in the garage. But I just saw him go back to the house. Oh? With Ming Toy? No. Why did he take her to the garage? I guess to improve her appearance. What? Oh, well, come on. We can soon find out. Ah. Ernest, what do you know about your butler anyway? Not much. He's only been with us a couple of weeks. Oh? What sort of references did he have? I don't know. Ask Father. He engaged him. Ah, I will. And then I would like to ask you some questions. I'm still not satisfied in spite of my... Look, Fitch has the dog, not me. I know, hey, but... Hey, hey, wait a minute. What is this? What? Right there, crouching by that bush. Can that be Ming Toy? Right. Gosh, it is, and she's stripped clean. <laughs> she's been shaved. She looks like a damp sock. Oh, come here, Ming Toy. Just sits there shivering. I think she's embarrassed. Here, I'll get her. Come here, Ming Toy. Cold. Well, don't worry. I'll buy you mink. <laughs> here she comes. I thought that would do it. It works every time. Don't drop her. Oh, don't worry, Ernest. I shall guard Ming Toy with my life. Well, come on. What's the matter? My legs are giving out again. Oh, it's your of condition. I guess. Mother? Ernest, have you found my treasure? Yes, Mother, we found oh, it. Oh, that's wonderful. Give it to Mother, Temple. Yeah, here. Thank you, it seems your butler is a frustrated father. What? Where's father? Templer wants to talk to him about things. He's in the back study, but I, I, I don't understand. That makes it unanimous. Look after your mother, Ernest. She's had quite a shock. Meanwhile, I'll go see if your father can help explain why Ming Toy has been forced to become a strip teaser. Oh, 
But don't bother me, Chubber. Don't bother me. I've got enough on my mind. A son who gambles away every penny I give him. A wife who charge uh. accounts away even pennies I don't give her. Believe me, young man, anybody ever tells you it's a picnic being a millionaire, don't you listen. Take it from me. Before you make a million, just be sure you can afford it. I'll make a note of that. But about Ming Tony... Look, oh, last night the dog is kidnapped. Or dog napped, or whatever you call it. Uh. The wife throws such a tizzy it takes three pills to get me to sleep. This morning the wife jewels are gone. Another tizzy. Policemen, insurance adjusters, and now you... Look, I don't care if the dog has been peeled. See, I don't care. I've got enough on my mind. But maybe it all ties together. The dog is stolen, the jewels are stolen. I can add two and two, Temple. I don't need your masterminding. The dog was stolen first so the thief could break in later without the dog barking. Think I couldn't figure that out? No, no, I think you could. And it's possible the thief thought so, too. Yeah, what's that? I have a hunch the robbery was the work of some member of this household. Nonsense. And the dog napping was just a red herring to throw you off the track. <sighs> to make you think just what you did think. That it was an outside rather than an inside job. Get out of here, Templar. Get out of here before I throw you out. I'd just like to ask you about fish. Uh, shave. Fine, Butler. Excellent. One peculiarity, that's all. Likes to shave dogs. So what? We can't all be perfect. Now get out of here, Templar, before I have him shave you, and it may be closer than you like. <laughs> Father? Yeah. Yeah, I learned he has a temper. Oh, he's in one of those. Uh-huh. So if I want to learn about Fitch, I'll have to learn it from Fitch himself. Only trouble is I can't find the kitchen. Is there a map of this place anywhere? It's down this way. Come on, I'll take you. I'll talk to you anyway. Thanks. So you don't have signposts. How's your mother? Sniffing, smelling salt. And ring soy? Taking it better than mother. Yeah. Just keep her away from Mary. She'll be all right. But, Temper, I said I want to talk to you. We're talking. I want to talk about you. My favorite subject. It's all very well you're pretending you want to help, but how do we know... Are we almost there? My legs are giving out again. That's right in here. Take us in the kitchen to the butler's family. Good. Fitch! Fitch! Don't bother calling him, Ernest. He can't hear you. What? Huh? Right behind that table. Oh. Is he dead? Extremely. Please, dear, I can't talk now. I'm so upset about Ming Toy. Oh, hang Ming Toy. Jonathan Allardyce. Oh, look, you're... I'm trying to tell you something. That man Templar, he's getting ideas. I don't like it. He's been snooping around here. Well, the first thing we know... Well, all we have to do is to be nice to him. Nice to him? Confounded, Isabel. I'm going to... May I come in? No. Temper, I thought I told you to get the blazers out of this house. Oh, is that what you told me? I've been trying to figure it out, but you were so incoherent. Now, see here. If you want me to go, I'll be glad to. But I thought I ought to tell you about your butler first. Yes, yes, I know. You think he's a thief. Very well, I'll have the police. You're wrong, Mr. Allardyce. I don't think he's a thief. He's been cleared. The hard way. What? Somebody murdered him. <gasps> Ernest oh. is calling the police now. Oh. Yep, we have a knife. Oh, dear, and good butlers are so scarce these days. Ah. Jonathan! <laughs> Mr. Templer, what happened to Jonathan? Looks like he's fainted. Well, what, oh, what do we do? Get me some water. Get it yourself. I can't wait. Can't wait? Well, you can't leave me now. I've got to, or there may be another murder. No, no, come back here. Later, Mrs. Allardyce. Oh, Mr. Templer, oh. Fitch! Oh, no, he's... Somebody, please! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Louis, what now, Mr. Temple? Have you seen Stevie? If I do, there's going to be a murder. If we don't, there's going to be a murder. Stevie? Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. You know what that kid done? What? He scrambled the wires in the engine while I was snoozing. That's why we wouldn't start before. He was detectiving, Louis. We were possible suspects, and he wanted to foil our getaway. Well, wasn't that cute? No, no, I'm not joking. His life is in danger. I'm not surprised. If I can't find Stevie, I'll have to find Ernest. Who's he? Allardyce's son. I wonder if he's the one drove away just now. Drove away? Did something? Yeah, yeah. A car just went down the other drive. Uh, have you got your wires on scrambled? Oh, yeah. All right, Louis. Let's go. <laughs> This 
sway, that's all I know. And you don't know if Stevie was in the car? I don't know who was in the car. I didn't see. Well, he must be. It's the only thing that makes sense. Now what? The road branches three ways. Which way do we go? Oh, oh. Oh, there we are. They went that way, to the left. How do you know? Well, there's fresh tire tracks. The others are old. Oh, yeah. And step on it, Louis. Okay. Well, in your ears. Here we go. But I would still like to know what's going on. Louis, look out for that turn. Close your eyes and play, Mr. Dunkler. Here we go. Got your eyes open, Mr. Templer? Yeah. Yeah, we made it. Oh, good. Then I can open mine. Louis. <laughs> you saw coming out of Allardyce's? Looks like. That's good, but I hope we're not too late. Uh, nobody in it. No. Yeah, there's a path into the woods. Come on. Yeah. Hurry up, Louie. Right through here. I'm afraid to call the kids. That's it. I still like to know what's going on. Well, as I see it, Louie, yeah. Ernest ran up a gambling debt, and his papa wouldn't pay off for him. Oh. At any rate, Papa was griping about Ernest gambling. Ernest, I take it, is Allardyce Jr.? Yeah, that's right. Ernest had to get money, so he drove Ming Toy away from home and put her out of the car. Yeah. Then he swiped the family jewels, and the missing dog made it look like an outside job. Smart guy, Junior. What makes you think he's going to knock off the kid? He's already knocked off the butler. Oh, yeah. How do you know it was Ernest which knocked off the butler? Because when I told Allardyce, he fainted. And he didn't faint out of great feeling for the butler. Uh -huh. Fellow had only been with him a couple of weeks. He fainted because he knew his son was guilty of the robbery, and he realized his son was also a murderer. Oh. Stevie! Where'd you come from? Stevie, you all right? For sure I'm all right. And Ernest don't feel so good. Mr. Temple, look. Ernest is out cold. What do you mean? Yeah. You know something? Ernest should have his mouth washed out with soap. Why, Stevie? He doesn't tell the truth. Well, what do you mean? Well, last night, I seen him driving away with Ming Toy. Uh -huh. And when I asked where he was taking her, he says, Shh, it's a big secret. Spies have tattooed a secret message on her skin. Uh, he found out, and he's taking her to the FBI. And I mustn't tell nobody, because it's FBI top secret. I see. But I'll find out now, he was just trying to shut me up. Hey, I gotta remember that. Next time my nephew gets in my hair, FBI top secret. Hey, Louie, then that explains the shaving. Huh? The butler must have overheard Ernest telling this young man about the secret message on Ming Toy. And he figured if it was true, the dog would be worth money. So we oh. look for the message. Sure, when the butler shaves the pooch, Ernest gets wise. Yeah. The butler is wise, so he shuts the butler up. And he tried to shut me up, too. He said we were going to meet an FBI man out here. Instead, he gets me in, and then he pulls out a knife. Yeah. And then... And what happened? Judo. Judo? Sure. My brother was in the Marines. He taught me. Oh. Ernest is waking up. <laughs> and you were worried about the kid, oh. Mr. Templer. <laughs> like I told you, when them little hyenas is around, all you got to protect is yourself. Gee, Mr. Templer, you want me to teach you some frost? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Stevie, I don't... It's easy. Look, I'll show you. Well, Stevie, please. First, you take your guy's yeah. arm like this. Now, just a minute, Stevie. Let's, let's talk this over. You see, uh, leverage is the important part of this Let, Let's keep it that way. Now, Shall we? I just pull back it... real hard. Uh, Louie, help! <laughs> to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Barry Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago it was written that man shall not live by bread alone. In this often quoted line from the Bible, bread is merely a symbol of all material values. And although we in America have the greatest material advantages in the world, they are not enough to bring us complete happiness. We must find that happiness in our spiritual as well as our material lives. In faith as well as bread. In America, one of our most precious heritages is the right to worship as we please. To know the spiritual pleasures of our churches and synagogues. The doors of your places of worship stand open to you and your religious leaders will welcome you to their services. They also offer you personal and family guidance and the opportunity to become a firm part of your community. 
Through our churches and synagogues, that community and the families within it can find stability. And as an individual, you can find the peace that only religion can bring. Thus, the religious organizations of America invite you to find yourself through faith and come to church this week. This is Barry Sullivan inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Johnson was their son, Ernest, Ted Osborne was the butler, Jeffrey Silver was Stevie, and Larry Dotkin was Louie. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Stanley. mean good times on NBC. And the chimes are anticipating the hilarious antics of Bob Hope and Groucho Marx. Hope returns to the air with more laughs on Tuesday, October 3rd. Groucho Marx brings his riotous quiz, You Bet Your Life, to the air on Wednesday, October 4th. So that's Bob Hope, October 3rd, Groucho Marx, October 4th. Yes, three chimes mean good times on NBC. Welcome back. You know, there are lines you have to uh, find problematic if you're a actor filling in for a beloved star of a series. And one of those is, I'm not exactly feeling myself. At any rate, I do hope that the saint tips generously for all the time that Louis has uh, spent. Because he is right, the only negative of having the saint there is only one tip. So I hope people weren't just like flat tipping because yeah, that, that could definitely be problematic. The after show commercial was actually incorrect. The Saint would not return the next week. The series would actually go on hiatus for four weeks and be replaced by the Phil Harris and Alice Faye show and return on October 24th. And I actually edited the Wikipedia entry, one of them, uh, because it indicated that, or implied that uh, there were decisions to make changes to the show, but uh, and that they changed to Barry Sullivan, and he didn't work out, and so they brought uh, Vincent Price back. However, listening to the program, it's clear that Vince, uh, that uh, Barry Sullivan was only a stopgap measure. No matter how well he did, he was not going to be a permanent replacement for the Saint. And Vincent Price would return to the role and remain there for eight months until he'd leave it for good. But that's another story for another day. Now we turn to some listener comments and feedback. Kate comments, uh, Great choice. Loving the characters in this one. And this is uh, from the horrible hamburger, I should say. And Val says, I love this episode. First of all, some cracking one-liners. He got tired of waiting. Terribly tired, Louie. He got dead. It's not bad either, but it looks married. Teddy is great, too. Thanks, Val. Glad you enjoyed the episode. And then we receive a helpful email from Scott in Pensacola. He says that I'm currently a few weeks behind, but I heard you read a letter about the Saint TV show. I don't know if you talked about it since, but I watch it on MeTV Sunday nights at midnight. Uh, just an FYI. Well, thanks so much for sharing, Scott. Uh, MeTV, that's M-E-T-V, uh, does a lot of um, uh, nostalgic television shows. And certainly if you're curious about seeing the same, might make sense to set your uh, DVRs or stay up to midnight and watch it uh, if uh, you get a MeTV a translator in your area. Because outside of that, the only ways to see the Saint TV show 
are to buy the DVDs which are out of print or very expensive or you can purchase them for streaming on Amazon but it's $1.99 an episode which is a little bit pricey. So thanks so much for the tip on MeTV. Alright, well that will do it for today. I do want to encourage you to support our listener support campaign, support.greatdetectives.net. And among the available thank you gifts we do have there, at the $50 level, I'll gladly send you any Poirot audio drama that is available through audible.com. And there are quite a few John Moffat, currently the definitive uh, audio Poirot. All of those uh, adaptations, very faithful uh, to the original. And at the $100 level, I'll send you your choice of any full-length Poirot uh, novel that's available on audible.com. Full list of available items at support.greatdetectives.net. In the meantime, I send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And you can send correspondence to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho 83715. From Boise, Idaho, the